So a scientist's faith in evolution isn't based on a religious style belief, it's based on established evidence. Now for how a non-scientist like me, or presumably you, should react to all this. Unless you are a trained scientist in a relevant field, you likely don't possess the skills or information necessary to fully understand what the theory of evolution says. You can get as close as a layman can get by reading books like, say, Evolution the First Four Billion Years, edited by Michael Roos and Joseph Travis, or The Greatest Show on Earth by Richard Dawkins, or pretty much any book by Richard Dawkins, or Wonderful Life or The Panda's Thumb, or pretty much any other book by Stephen Jay Gould. But that still won't give you, or me, the kind of understanding of evolutionary theory that someone with a doctorate in evolutionary biology has. But that doesn't mean us regular folks have to rely on a religious sort of faith when wrestling with whether or not to accept the theory of evolution. We can do something a lot more practical, a lot more reliable than just picking the side we like and hoping it's right. We can do something that good scientists do every day. We can look at the evidence. Like I said, I don't have the tools necessary to fully interpret the evidence that proves evolution. The fossil record, the genetic code, the real hardcore science that truly demonstrates beyond a reasonable doubt that evolution is true. For that, I need a scientist to interpret that data for me. A scientist like Richard Dawkins, or P.Z. Myers, or Carl Zimmer, or Mark Isaac or John Maynard Smith, or Stephen Jay Gould, or Bernard Murphy. He was my biology professor in college. You've probably never heard of him. Or Charles Darwin. He was the founder of modern biology. You probably have heard of him. Or any of the 72 Nobel laureates in physics, chemistry, or physiology, or medicine who signed on to this amicus curiae brief submitted to the Supreme Court in 1986 in the case of Edwards v. Aguilard, arguing in support of teaching evolution in public school classes and keeping all forms of creationism out. Or anyone from the 17 state academies of science that signed on to the Edwards v. Aguilar amicus brief. Or anyone from the seven other scientific organizations who signed on to the same brief. Are you starting to get the picture? The scientific consensus for evolution is overwhelming. According to a count taken by Newsweek in 1987, I know, old numbers, best I could do, of the 480,000 Earth and Life scientists working in the United States, only 700 expressed some doubts about evolution. Coincidentally, 700 is also the approximate number of scientists who have signed on to the Descent from Darwin document drafted by the Discovery Institute, a creationist think tank. So here I am, as a layman, interested in evolution. I want to have an informed opinion, but I lack the intellect and education necessary to a full understanding of this very complex subject. What do I base my opinion on? Do I agree with the 480,000 Earth and Life scientists who accept the theory of evolution, who use it every day in their work in biology, medicine, agriculture, genetics, environmental science, not to mention anthropology, paleontology, and a whole host of other fields, who utilize it in writing and publishing thousands and thousands of scientific papers in rigorously peer-reviewed scientific journals? Or do I agree with the creationists who have 700 scientists on their side? And I think that's an optimistic figure. Not all 700 of those are creationists. Who have no coherent theory of their own as an alternative to evolution and spend most of their time using the same tired, refuted arguments to poke holes here and there in Darwinism. The two sides in the creationism versus evolution debate are not equal in size or credibility. The scientists who express fundamental doubts in the theory of evolution comprise less than 0.15% of the earth and life sciences and less than 5% of the total scientific community. Now, you as a creationist might challenge me by saying that I'm just picking a side, that I've already admitted that I lack a true understanding of evolutionary theory, and I'm just believing that evolution is true because I want evolution to be true. And that's why I'm siding with the vast majority of scientists while you're siding with the Ken Hams and Dr. Dinos of the world, that despite my protests to the contrary, 
it all really does just come down to faith. Here's my problem with that. Unless you, my hypothetical creationist friend, are one of those 700 or so credentialed scientists who dispute evolution, you are probably just as lacking as I am in a true, deep understanding of evolutionary theory. I lack the expertise necessary to interpret the evidence for evolution properly, but I can still say that I accept evolution with confidence and intellectual honesty because 99.85% of those who do possess the expertise to interpret the evidence tell me that it points to evolution. I'm not taking it as an article of faith. I'm doing what scientists do every day. I'm looking at the evidence and I'm coming to the most likely conclusion. And what is more likely? That the 0.15% who doubt evolution are correct, and the 99.85% who accept evolution have either all come to the same incorrect conclusion, or are intentionally misrepresenting the truth, or that the 0.15% are wrong. Of course, the scientific consensus could be wrong. It's happened before. Until the mid-20th century, few astronomers accepted the Big Bang theory. Up to that point, most of them believed in some sort of an eternal universe, like that described by Fred Hoyle and others in the steady state theory. But as observations and evidence continued to accumulate, they gradually realized that the Big Bang theory best accounted for what we see in the universe. Fred Hoyle never came around, but today the Big Bang Theory is just as universally accepted among astronomers as evolutionary theory is among biologists. As a layman, I have to base my opinion on something better than just blind faith. That's why I don't base it on what one or two or several dozen or seven hundred people tell me. I base it on what thousands and thousands and thousands of scientists tell me from all over the world that evolution is true, that it's best described by the theory originated by Charles Darwin. Is it possible that all those scientists are wrong? Yes. And when creationists have convinced them, they'll have convinced me. But they're going to need a better argument than it all comes down to faith. I'm sick of that one.